Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Daniel and in today's lesson we are going to be looking at how you can introduce motion blur into your 3D characters in your ArchViz scenes. So over here we have a photo from Houghton Crow, some of the best uh, photographers out there for architecture. And as you can see these guys are in motion and the key thing is that the foot that is still is in focus so the rest of the body that is moving is out of focus and the foot that is planted is in focus so if you have a look for example over here here's another good example on the right hand side the foot that is planted is in focus and the others in movement over here you have some tutorials <laughs> that are showing you how to do it wrong, where the whole body is basically moving and you're just blurring an image essentially. And that is not the correct way to do it. So we're gonna jump into 3ds Max and I'm gonna show you how to achieve this correct result in just a few minutes. Okay, so here we have our 3ds Max scene. The first thing that you're going to need is a character that's in motion. So you're going to need to download or buy some 3D characters that are animated. So this is my one, for example. And we are going to be animating this guy. So just drop that back to our frame where we had it before. So there's a few settings that we need to set up for this to work. And the first one we're going to go and check out is camera over here inside of your render setup. And you need to make sure that your motion blur is enabled. Okay. And just keep the default settings. Then we are going to go to our camera settings. So you can just go to Corona camera over here and select it. And we're going to come down and we need to make sure that we have the camera and geometry selected in this part as well. Now, all we need to do is we need to just start playing with our shutter speed. So our shutter speed is what uh, creates the effect. So if you see like blurred cars inside of photos that are taken in the evening, that is because of the long exposure. So we're going to come to this setting over here, which is the shutter speed of 50. And we are just going to start our interactive rendering. So as you can see at the moment, we're getting a very slight effect on this foot, almost nothing because our shutter speed is rather quick. But if we drop this shutter speed to around 10, we should get the effect that we are looking for. And as you can see now, this is starting to look like what we are aiming to achieve. Yeah, and that, and that gives your image a lot more uh, movement. Basically, it helps your eye move from your character towards the focal point, which is at the center. And in general, I would suggest using this inside of your images and it looks a lot better than 2D stuff. So if we just played around with the shutter speed a little bit more and drop that to say five. Now we're going to get an even more pronounced effect. So what I would suggest is just having a look at your reference and essentially just adjusting the shutter speed to your taste. For me, I think that the value of 10 is good and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Sometimes it's better not to overdo things. Subtlety is always better than going over the top. So we'll just let this render out and I think that's it for today guys. If you enjoyed that lesson and you learned something please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.